good morning. Welcome to this new appointment of Mount of Architettura 2021, dedicated to the exhibition design. I'm Marco Borsotti, Professor of Interior and Exhibition Design at the School of Architecture of the Polytechnic of Milan, and I'm very pleased to introduce you our guest, Franco Rolle. Uh, Franco Rolle was one of the founding members of uh, uh, N03, and uh, in uh, 2016, he founded NEO, Narrative Environments Opera, with uh, Fabio Molteni and uh, Cinzia Rizzo. He has been teacher and visitor professor at Turin and Milan Politecnico, he had master and Central St. Martins in London, and he is teacher at the Polytechnic of Milan Polydesign, master in, in exhibition design. Uh, the name Narrative Environment Opera reveals that Franco Roller's interest is in design narrative spaces through the creation and staging of real stories, which must uh, take shape, becoming an occasion not only for learning and meditation, but also for an active and physical involvement of the visitors. Franco Rolle also gives a great importance to time as a design element to be molded in order to transform experience that are often based on the intangible materials into real experience of knowledge. So exhibition becomes unity of space, visualization and action, and their simultaneity coordinated with time define a new dimension of narration where multiple disciplines converge from architecture to cinema, music, and so on, to generate an alternative and innovative vision of narrative spaces. The use of multimedia tools, which represent for Neo the leading instruments, become the occasion to trigger an experience of exhibition narration that assume a direct physical presence. The material become material, the vanishing electronic presence become a dialogue atmosphere in which to immerse yourself. So thank you, Franco, thank you for your being with us today and I give you the floor. Franco Rolle. Okay, thank you very much Marco. Hello to everybody. Okay, so let's start. Um, um, so the introduction was perfect and uh, my name is Franco, as uh, Marco told you, and uh, I'm part of this group called NEO that uh, are, we are dealing with uh, the exhibition design mainly applied to uh, museums and exhibition temporary exhibitions but also the idea of the narrative environment is something peculiar so it's a certain way of making exhibition design there's a different a lot of way of making exhibition design like uh, there's a lot of way of making architecture and design so we are dealing with a spatial way because we are using the technology and not only, but this idea is also can be applied to all the, the kind of spaces. And at the moment also we are uh, working on the spatial, uh, very, very special projects uh, about uh, uh, the new retail. And uh, I want to start uh, to just to show you some let's say sentences uh, that is a kind of uh, our little manifesto and to make you understand better our way of thinking and, and uh, our approach to design so what are narrative environments designing and creating narrative environments means creating stories that simultaneously involve physical space and present time, here and now, giving the direct experience of an intrinsic, philosoph an, uh, intrinsic philosophical value. And uh, we can say that in this, let's say, today panorama that is characterized by the immaterial of the digital experience, uh, the instant access to any type of knowledge, rethinking the concept of the direct experience, shared at the same time by mind and body represent a particularly exciting challenge for us. Space, time and action. Uh, so we started to uh, thinking about the relations between these uh, uh, three words and uh, kind of uh, actualizing 
the Aristotelian units of space, time, and action can be that can be asserted that in the narrative environment, the action that is the content of the story is articulated beginning, development, and within a space that, that is the exhibition path, and the time, that is the visiting time, by linking the story told with the experience lived by the people. To be or not to be there. Being in a place is naturally very different from not being there. Being in a place means, above all, to be, to exist, or to be present to something or someone. Going to a place where a story is told, let us choose to be social individuals, even just because the place is frequented by other people. Places speak. Each space already communicates emotions and notions in itself through a visual code, whether it is characterized by traces of a distant past, signs of present life, or lines designed for the future. This very first level of perceptions of space is a raw material of the narrative environment. Works at the center. Um, the presence uh, of original works uh, of particular artistic and architectural interest uh, or of historical, scientific relevance uh, within a narrative environment must always be considered with this respect. But it's the story created around them that allows to bring out uh, its intrinsic value. There is not only one way of reading things. That means that in the narrative environments, the contents uh, that is what you as designer want to tell are designed to be assimilated through a multi-level reading, which involves both the emotional and the rational side at the same time. Emotions and sensations are used to better memorize the contents and not just to entertain the audience. A necessary hybrid. The presence of images, text, sounds, music, objects, lights, and whatever else is functional to a story and it is organized and calibrated uh, on a certain time of views and uh, for a given path. This story is articulated and developed in space, uh, merging multiple aspects borrowed from different fields, uh, such as art, architecture, cinema, theater, photography, music, writing, the web, traditional exhibition design, technological research and others. In the narrative environment, can therefore be defined as an expressive form that blends many elements from these to other universes. And then come to the fact that innovating does not mean clicking. So innovating does not necessarily mean staging the latest technological evolution or abusing new visual sounds or textual codes that follows the dictates of the fashion in terms of communication. It's the result of a, res a research that investigate the potential of the various systems and styles by adopting them to the technical. Each project uses different technology that, that are designed ad hoc according to the content. And then there's a difference between interactions and interactivity. Because in the present, where everything has been made interactive and participatory, the word interaction begins to take on a different meaning than in the very near past. The concept of physical interaction through technological interfaces and devices must not be considered as a proof of, of uh, the innovative nature of the project. It is not the use of sensors, 
that tell us that we are alive and present, but what we feel into it or understand here and now. The so-called new technologies universally arouse great curiosity and interest, but technology must be used in general in functions of the communication project, remaining one of the many tools available and never the only aim. And that's another problem of the technology, that in the permanent museums, it has to be granted the durability and the validity of the experience in all its elements, from the technological architectural systems to the possibility of technical and content updates. Museums are no longer and must no longer be dust in static places, but on the contrary, they must be perceived and experienced as contemporary vital and expandable places. And then we arrive to the end. So that's uh, designing narrative experience environments means uh, to design a complex system. In the narrative environments, the projects are always very complex system that has to be designed following several steps. First of all, the result of the designing process is a result of a teamwork in which we can we call to action different subjects, starting from our design team till the scientific and historical committee that are most of the time the curators that give the point of view where from where we have to start and that we have to put on stage. Most of the time, it's interesting to see how the skills of the individuals are reversed and how everyone becomes a very active part of the design. And another very important step in the designing of the narrative environment is the creation of the language that we want to use according to the subject that we are dealing with. So we are not uh, um, using a language, but we use the language according to the content. Most of the time we are working on the metaphorical level that helps us to find a way to find it. And moreover, as designer and not scenographer, we try not to be didactic because uh, there's always the risk of creating a fake instead of the design, and then the risk of entertaining the audience instead of communicating the contents to them. So that was just an introduction. Uh, so we have a site, uh, and also we have a social, so we're using Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and so on, but mainly we're using our site to keep all the information. Uh, uh, so inside there's the, the photos, the videos, and, and also we are now just starting to add that on some projects I will show you later. And usually when I have this, uh, um, let, let's, say, let's say call about um, our work, uh, I start to show, as I'm starting with this project and uh, that is called Design Opera. Design Opera was an, an exhibition. We were asked from uh, ADI, uh, that is the Italian Design Association, to make an exhibition about uh, uh, the ADI Design Index, that is a book uh, that collects the best design of the year. That year was the 2013, I guess. And uh, how was our approach to design? We make a huge basement long 35 meters and we put all the objects uh, we had on it and the idea and we start from a question so how do we approach we didn't want to make an exhibition that put on stage the design design because we are in milan we have every year tons of different uh, exhibition about the design but what we would like to investigate was not the celebration of the design itself, was the, re relation, uh, the re relations between people and uh, objects. And that's very interesting because I guess as, as designers, uh, we have uh, 
we are uh, we have to create a better world and we have to create something that uh, creates relations with the people. Uh, for doing that, the metaphor was used in the music, and so we started uh, to re redesigning uh, a very famous Italian opera by Tosca, Visti d'arte, Visti d'amore, that we transform and we re redesign in uh, um, an electronic way, let's say. And uh, we created three actors. So actually, it's not an exhibition; it's a kind of opera exhibition. And the three actor was were about three questions uh, we were um, making to the audience. The first question was Act One: uh, What's the relation between between you and uh, the object? It's the that's it's the basic idea of the, of love. How do you get in love with the, another people, or why do you get in love with some object? Why do you buy them? And how do you create a relation? How do you recognize some someone or something between millions of others? Uh, something that uh, you don't know, and something that is uh, coming from the deep of your human being, and it's something that uh, designing uh, is working on that. Uh, and I guess it was very interesting to uh, put on stage the idea of uh, uh, creating and designing relations. The second question was about the, the relations between objects. There was a catalog and the catalog there are different fields. And so the design is very huge and um, there were like uh, sex toys, uh, toilets, uh, uh, crucifix, uh, uh, lamps, uh, chairs, uh, and uh, a motorbike. So there were so many different objects and they, the question was, uh, if all that objects are put on the stage, what's the relation between them? So must be a relation because we are, as I told you before, we are living now, at this time, at this moment, these objects are there at this time and this moment. And so must be the relation. And relation is the, the idea of the design. And the third time, and the third question we made, the third actor was the, the um, the question was, uh, what's the time uh, of the objects? Uh, and that question was, uh, has maybe two different uh, approach. The first one is, uh, what is the time of the object themselves in terms of uh, uh, how long an object can, uh, uh, can live? And the second is, uh, how is the, your perceptions and your interaction with the objects at the, during the uh, the daytime, so starting from the morning to the night, uh, and how do you see the objects uh, according to the changing of the light? So in this case, uh, both for, for all the three acts, uh, we use uh, three uh, different uh, design approach. Uh, we put the beamers on the top that were, were that was mapping the space, uh, and according to the act, uh, we use three different languages. The first one, we were like, uh, using uh, colored lights uh, that were like flashing the objects and to and then let you show one object uh, that was suddenly ap appearing from the dark uh, creating like a shocking view and uh, an emotional approach the second uh, act uh, we designed a uh, digital dust uh, that was like covering all the object and creating lines uh, that was deformating uh, and so it was creating a starting from a linear to the curved surface, uh, connecting all the objects uh, uh, also far away of the stage. And on the third act, uh, we use uh, just a white light to analyze the objects in movement, creating different kinds of shapes and shadows on the base. Uh, now I'll show you the video that is clearer maybe than my words.
Okay, so uh, you can see at the end of the, the show, uh, all the objects were unlighted from this uh, white light. The idea also was to um, to talk about the opera of Tosca, where the singer was singing the aria Visidati Visida Morte under the moonlight. Uh, the idea was uh, to create something not uh, different, but uh, uh, maybe it makes you better understand our approach uh, uh, of design and the fact that we are very concentrated uh, on creating relations uh, with the people and also thinking that when you're going to an exhibition, you have not to be passive, but you have to be active in trying to understand the contents and maybe to make questions to the audience instead of giving answers. And uh, I guess this exhibition was very, maybe a little complicated to understand, but uh, um, according to us, it's a, a, a possible way of creating something interesting and uh, to see the design from different point of view. Okay. Next project I want to show you, it's a project uh, we did uh, some times ago. Okay, it is called Anima di Gomma. Um, what to say about this project? Um, as I told you before, we like to work uh, using metaphor, metaphor, uh, using a metaphor as a way of uh, uh, a, a solution to uh, to use this metaphor as a solution to create relations with the audience, but also to communicate contents. In this case, we were asked by. Fondazione Pirelli to make this exhibition about their archive that it was huge. Pirelli in the years collected uh, a lot of material about uh, done by very famous photographer, uh, designers uh, and graphic designers uh, for their um, advertisements of uh, communications. So it was very, very interesting. Um, they, uh, the problem is that uh, some, most of this material could be bored and for uh, simply collections and maybe uh, just putting on the wall this material like paintings uh, it doesn't communicate and doesn't create this uh, uh, immersive and emotional approach to the, uh, to the works. It was much more than it looks like. Uh, the idea it's very, very simple. Unfortunately, what it looks like very, very simple, it's very complicated to make. And in this case, uh, the idea was so simple. And I show you one photo where uh, maybe you can see. OK, what's this one? We design a white ball. This was our metaphor. At the same time, this was the Virgil of the exhibition. The, the, the ball was bouncing on the walls uh, and 
that we design following this idea. So creating a two layer, one you can see is darker, one is lighter, lighter. and uh, the bounce was, uh, uh, the ball was bouncing in the darker side that was the same space where the audience was uh, walking. So the people just could walk on this layer and the ball was uh, bouncing on the same level. Uh, the, ball, the, the ball was uh, was this Virgilio that was com com was uh, moving around you, mo you moving around the, the people that was visiting the exhibition, and it was activating the contents uh, that was uh, that were uh, organizing different rooms uh, according to the subject. And for instance, in one room, we that is this one. In the corridor, the the, the corridor, the, the ball was explaining the, all the technical details about the rubber. But in the rooms were explaining the material. And for instance, uh, we found this way of putting C the on 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 stage the photo by Mulas. And the idea that uh, it's, it's a just a normal sliding. Uh, uh, but uh, what's interesting because uh, there was a mechanism, eh? the ball was going inside the mechanism, was changing the weather, so it was starting raining, the rain was melting the photo and it was uh, dropping on the floor and then the sun was arising again and uh, the photo was changing. So it's a way of, uh, it's uh, as I told you, sometimes we are trying to find also theatric, theatrical uh, way of ex putting on stage the material. I showed the video because it's always a, it's a clear, more clear the videos than my words.
Uh, so uh, about this project, this project was awarded in uh, Berlin for the Red Dot and it got the best of the best uh, uh, awards. So it was it's the maximum of the Red Dot uh, and in the 2014, it means uh, seven years ago and seven years ago, uh, it's uh, a long, uh, in another area for, in terms of technology. Uh, as you can see, uh, we are using the technology behind this exhibition. There's a lot of technology. The technology is hidden, not because uh, uh, we just want to hide the technology, but because we don't like to, uh, our style is not high tech. So uh, the audience, uh, there's a different uh, kind of type of audience since uh, young people that maybe are very good in technology, but also 
elder people and we want to that the people feel comfortable inside our space so and the interaction must be natural and so if something is happening it's happening because uh, you are there and you are there as a human so we like to have this human approach of the interfaces uh, even if they're in the space and not just on the screen and uh, another idea that is maybe it's clear from this project is that uh, when you are designing narrative environments, uh, so I'm an architect uh, and as architect, I'm of course, I'm the one that is designing the spaces, uh, but also I'm the concept designer. So I'm starting um, from the beginning, from the idea of the boats, for instance, uh, what's the discussions and, and then I have to transfer into the space uh, uh, the, um, uh, the idea we are working on, but uh, uh, as uh, Neo, Neo is also designing all the contents uh, and all the contents, the video contents uh, must be designed a certain way because uh, in this case, uh, and it mainly in general in the narrative environment spaces, uh, uh, the, the contents and the space are linked together and uh, they have no meaning uh, uh, if uh, they are not together. So if you see if you see these exhibitions without contents, uh, you don't understand. But if you see the contents without exhibitions, uh, physical exhibitions, also the contents has, the, has not that, that meaning. And that's uh, why it's very important. Uh, and we are that's why what I'm doing and we are all doing in, in NEO. So we are starting from contents, we are transforming content into, let's say, multimedia contents, and we are using multimedia contents as construction material to create the space. And that's uh, the design approach. Uh, you must have to create something like that. Otherwise, uh, you just put the screen on the walls and you put contents in the screen, but the contents, uh, maybe are also you can see also on uh, your sofa watching your mobile phone or you know, on the metro um, because um, there's a very interesting contents uh, that have uh, also uh, it's, it's time of narrations like a movie from the beginning to the end but when you are moving inside the space uh, the contents has to design the in a different way. The content has to follow you into the space. That's why it uh, has, to, has to, to be designed in totally different way than uh, traditional, let's say, um, multimedia contents. And why maybe one more information I want to give you about this exhibition is the idea of uh, using the space uh, and uh, the idea of the entertainment. So uh, what we like to we, we, we like to do, it's very important, is to use the emotions uh, and to put the uh, visitors in a kind of uh, emotional state because it's very important because when you are inside uh, in a, an immersive space uh, and you are emotioned, uh, you uh, you are more well you better welcome the contents that can deeply can be deeply uh, put inside you and so it's a way of uh, learning uh, that uh, works better than just uh, when you are sitting uh, and on the sofa and watching uh, a doku movie for instance and um, that's also because uh, Maybe we can talk it later, the idea of uh, how and what's uh, in the uh, aim of the new museum now, because uh, we have information in, the, in our mobile phone. We have a lot of information in our pocket. We can access uh, to the immaterial um, information at the, all the time, in all the moments of our life. Uh, but uh, then the fact that you are going inside the space uh, means that you are a social person and you are we are in interaction with other people that is watching with you and sharing with you this experience uh, and so you must uh, somehow you have to use also the audience inside the space to create this connection and to let them understand that we are all one humankind and uh, uh, that's a very important part of the, the narrative uh, environmental process. Okay. 
Other project I want to show you um, is this one. I'm starting from one project with other one with, with my there's a connection in my mind and maybe it's not clear for you. Uh, is this exhibition we did uh, two years ago. Uh, we were asked from Asso Lombarda. Asso Lombarda is association of the um, industries uh, of the Lombardia, Lombardy area. And uh, they made very interesting research because uh, that year was the, ce the celebration for Leonardo da Vinci. And uh, uh, there was a very interesting research done by Polytechnic of Milan uh, in the um, in the management management area, so not the design area, but it's uh, um, uh, this, I don't know at the moment in English I have to say, but anyway, um, that was the saying that since the beginning, so since starting from the relation with the Sforza and the Leonardo, uh, there was uh, uh, the innovation in this area was done by the relation between uh, the, um, the company and the designer and the genius. And so they made the research and uh, the result was very, very interesting. And in fact, this uh, kind of binomial um, was working and was applied and used uh, to a lot of innovations. So they asked us to uh, make an exhibition about that. The problem, we had two problems, uh, that uh, the subject itself was very interesting, was very scientific and economic, but it was just data and words on the papers. So totally there was not any uh, visual communication and uh, that was uh, given, to us, given to us. So we had to find out the way how to create a vision to the public to communicate that data. It's a kind of data viz uh, exhibition. And the second one was the space. So at the beginning, the, the show, the, the previous exhibition were done in Trinidad di Milano. It is a very famous place and uh, that for the exhibitions. And so it's maybe it's easier you now to create uh, um, stunning uh, uh, installations uh, when the space is uh, beautiful. But in this case, the space we had available was this uh, exhibition space uh, of the Regione Lombardia in the new uh, Regione Lombardia building done by uh, Kenzatani, I guess, yeah. Uh, it was, uh, and it was just a corridor of, uh, it was a corridor of a normal office uh, that was used uh, as uh, uh, exhibition space. So we had to make uh, an exhibition uh, with the uh, data in a corridor of uh, a normal um, office department. So in this case, I show you the project. So if you're interested, and maybe the students are interested uh, in the, um, the written part in, of our project, at the end, we add the, the presentation we, we did uh, of the project. And so you can see uh, how also we represent uh, our design and it's more for, let's say, designers and architects. Uh, and let's see, like this, no. Okay. So this was the space. So this was the corridor. The entrance was the elevators in here. You enter in this little room and you find this uh, huge corridor and with two bigger area at the end. This was a photo of the corridor. There was an exhibition of paintings at the moment before our exhibitions. So what we did and what uh, was our approach? Um, was approach now was to create three, uh, four different area. Uh, the first part we called uh, 
The Giardino delle Meraviglie, the, the Garden of the Wonders, where we were explaining the um, landmark of the, of the territory of the Lombardy. In the second one, second area, there was the wanted to explain the matching of the two people that was creating innovations. And in the third area, in, in the, there was a, the research of the Polytechnic, you know? and then in the third area, uh, we put on the stage the innovation that the couple uh, did before inside uh, Milano, inside the area. We use a lot of projections, and there was uh, uh, a strong interactivity in these uh, two uh, in these two parts. The idea was this one. We started from uh, we started from uh, the passage making photos of uh, Milan that we transform in this kind of uh, uh, very, very uh, natural garden. Maybe not real, it was over real. So we wanted with the idea of creating uh, this wonder that was not possible. So you can see Piazza del Duomo in this case, in front of the Gattacelli Pirelli and Santa Maria delle Grazie. This was the city life, uh, no, it was um, Gaolenti. They were transformed in gardens. And this uh, image was from photo, uh, was uh, modified into a video. So there was animation, graphic animations with the birds and the waters and the animals, butterflies and stuff, it's very, very natural. So, uh, from that image, we communicate the peculiarity of the uh, site. We made a research, which was the area that was more interesting to, to put on the stage, and which uh, from each photo, we communicate different aspects uh, that was coming out from the research. This, uh, for instance, uh, how the photo was done. We use uh, um, one photographer, a very famous, uh, to make these uh, uh, photos. And then how uh, we transform the same photo into uh, the garden. First we work in Photoshop, uh, but then every, every, all the images has to be done with the um, graphic animations. And it was very complicated uh, to create this uh, uh, video scenery. At the bottom, we design, uh, we started from the idea of having this installation, was interactive installation. We use a long screen monitor using uh, this uh, interactive uh, uh, film put under the, the glass. So in this case, you didn't see the in the um, hardware, but you just you just could see the uh, the graphic, and there was two lists. One from the left was uh, of the people of the companies, people from the companies. The right side were the designers, and you could pe you could put people from one list or the other list inside Piazza del Duomo. The people would start like walking all around the piazza, but then they were matching. And when they were matching, you can see on the right screen, uh, was appearing what the, the innovation, when they met, what the innovation they create. These are more 3D, we're using a lot of 3D because we want to control, this is an the interface, so the list, the left side, the right side, uh, the Piazza del Duomo. How it works. Uh, how can the were like uh, shown on the photos, on the video uh, of the top view of Piazza del Duomo? And what was happening when there was a match. 
and this was uh, to communicate better to the people, to the audience in the room, what was happening on the monitor. And from the uh, left side, okay, here there was the research, it was a, a traditional part, as I told you before, we, you can also, the innovation of the, in, to be innovative, that doesn't mean that you have to be innovative 100%. So sometimes also you, to, you can use a traditional uh, elements like a graphic to uh, to put inside your project. It's a kind of mix up of the different uh, uh, subjects. And it's, in this room, there was uh, this very wide uh, uh, round table. You can uh, turn this table and uh, uh, I have to say the you can see the Milan um, skyscraper uh, skylines moving in front of you, and uh, when on the table was like there were like tax tax, and when the tax were like combining, you can see in that area what uh, the couple did and what was the innovation they create. And uh, on the walls, uh, there were just a few monitors. Uh, you can, very, very simple. One was dedicated to Leonardo da Vinci, the Leonardo da Vinci and Federico Sforza, uh, that was the first couple. And there was a kind of story narrated by graphic. So you can see here more photos of the project, the interactive table and how we transform the stories uh, into uh, the graphic, so you can listen, but also watching the stories. And okay, there was a sponsorship, it was in the corner in the cafe. Marco, tell me if the audio is okay, it's on. Is working. Yes, it's okay. tell you before, uh, for us interaction doesn't mean clicking, interaction has to be used when necessary, when uh, uh, you need to use uh, the interaction to better tell uh, the story to the audience you want to, to tell. And uh, in this case also you can see technology is not used uh, in high-tech uh, aesthetical term, but is used just uh, uh, to create what you want to do. And um, for the setting up of the space, we used the surfaces was reflecting. So we try to transform the corridor into something more interesting and try to also to use the floor for simple projections to put uh, the, this uh, glazed material on the other side uh, and to create this work of uh, reflection between elements and to create a, uh, the space more interesting and more, let's say, immersive for the for the public. This project we did uh, um, couple, two years ago, and in this case we also were a creator of the exhibitions. The exhibition was about Paganini, and we 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 asked her to uh, to Palazzo Ducale to make the exhibition because uh, that year was the year of Paganini's uh, birthday, something like that. 
And uh, in this case, uh, um, what I want to show you is a kind of um, uh, how to put on the stage something intangible that has let me, uh, as, uh, that, um, the intangible part of the exhibition that is the music. So music has other kind of arts like paintings and sculptures and is, uh, must be put on in museums and in exhibition because it's interesting, it's very important to talk about the music. And Paganini is one of the most famous author we had. There were never, there was never an exhibition before. And so it's something that we like to uh, propose to the Palazzo Ducali, they welcome our uh, idea, and so we did this exhibition. And uh, how we started that it's difficult to put on stage the music, so we just uh, think uh, the main idea is to think about the theatre, because Paganini was the first uh, uh, music player that uh, uh, became a really rock star. Uh, because he had this uh, world tour and before him the the players, the music players were, were invited and paid by the court and uh, but he was the first one that managed himself, he was renting the theater, he was asking people to pay the tickets so he got money not from others but from the audience and he became a star, he was uh, traveling all over the world uh, and the people were shouting and crying at the concert. They were, the women were losing their senses and he created also uh, this um, fama, let's say, of uh, being part of, uh, uh, of um, Evil. So also design is a, a way of uh, how to represent himself, the public, so kind of uh, um, designing of, uh, of, of its own uh, identity. Um, but he was also a very famous uh, uh, composer. So he, know, he, knows, he is known mainly because uh, he could play the uh, violin in excellent way, and very, very fast, but uh, what was important that he, as a composer, he created some solutions uh, used to all the uh, composers after him, and also to some uh, contemporary artists like Jimi Hendrix uh, that used uh, some solutions of Paganini in uh, its own uh, um, songs. And that's why the exhibition is starting from Paganini, but it's finishing with uh, two Jimi Hendrix. Uh, the setup, the idea of the setup was uh, to think that uh, as uh, visitors, when you're going to a concert, you are sitting on your chair watching to the stage. But what we wanted to put in the scene was what was happening behind uh, the stage. So all the exhibition is like um, a designing of an exploded theater and we use just a few elements, a huge uh, a wooden screen that we were projecting and uh, this flight case that we projected uh, in a certain way. Everything has to be like uh, put there by chance, like when you're going in the backstage where there's a lot of elements all over uh, the space, uh, but it's the stage designed. And we de designed the non-designed part of the theater that is the what's behind the stage, the stage, and what's uh, happening behind the stage. And uh, in the exhibition, there are three main area because we use three main um, songs uh, of Paganini to explain the three main, um, they say, attitude of him. The first one, the, the virtu virtus, and uh, the fact, so you can see there are the words that are changing, changing very, very fast, so the audience uh, uh, is reading uh, the text as fast as the pa Paganini was playing the, the notes of the, of the music. And in the second one, we invited uh, a dancer 
that was Roberto Bolle, that uh, he, he made a cho choreography on the Capricci and just for the exhibitions. And so we put the talent, the idea of the talent, uh, using the dance. We use the dance to show the talent of Paganini. In the third exhibit, in the third part uh, with the Adagio, we put on the stage, uh, we make this very um, um, simple thing. We went around Genova, we asked the people to listen to the music of Adagio and we recorded their emotions. And the audience in the exhibition was listening to music at the same time the people recorded was listening. And so you can see the changing of their motion into the eyes, the movement of the face, and you were feeling uh, what the other people was feeling listening to the music. And to put on the stage uh, that uh, music create emotions, uh, but emotions is not something inside you, but it's something that, that uh, uh, is part of all your body. Moreover, there was a three main exhibit installations. We asked uh, uh, other people to talk about themselves and uh, talking about themselves, uh, they were talking about Paganini. We invited uh, Morgan, um, uh, Gianna Nannini, Ivano Fossati, that was one of the curator, and uh, Abado, which was, is one of the most important uh, uh, Paganini players in the world, to talk about themselves, but talking about themselves, they were talking about Paganini. So that's uh, because uh, the music is as a universal attitude. So when you are understanding you're making arts or you're making music, you can work uh, with a universal term of communication. And then the, in all the, the, um, the idea of using the showcases, the showcase looks normal, but they were designed just for the exhibition. They are very technological inside. Some were used to put inside the uh, normal exhibition design elements like the, the guitar, of Paganini, some Spartiti, say in English, and some were interactive. You can have part of the curators that were explaining the documents inside. Some documents can be um, read and stuff like that. And in some parts, uh, in this part, there were all the heritage of Paganini. So all the composers that after Paganini they made some pieces referring to him. So how important uh, uh, it was uh, to all the music behind after him. And so some of them are the contemporary artists. A uh, third element we had is these huge scenarios. So we uh, just uh, um, create, uh, starting for the painting of the 18th century, huge image that was giving the sensations of the of uh, uh, the visual, what was visually happening uh, at the, the time of um, Paganini. I showed the video, oh, sorry, these installations, for instance, uh, about the, the world tour. So in this case, uh, to explain the world tour, we took all the articles written by all the newspapers all over the world of the, um, of the tour, and we transformed the words in this uh, huge installation with the voice of the reading of uh, all the critics uh, and articles after Paganini played uh, in the, that uh, uh, city. I show you the video that it's always clearer than my words. La dimensione privata di Magani si accompagna con le cose estreme, si mischia tantissimo. Attratto dalle storie avventurose Il suo violino che si narra pare che parli, mondo. che pianga, che canti. Ogni parola ha un riferimento vicino. Ok, 
So I guess we are finishing before finishing the project. I want to show you this uh, last video. It's a kind of it's a video we did for them uh, after we won the Compasador last year because we want to thank so all the people that for of course they work with us as I told you yeah so all the projects were done in a huge team but also because uh, we have to explain maybe how it what how is it work it is uh, diff very very difficult to explain uh, and so we made this video that it's explaining you know, our point of view our projects and uh, what is important for us l'atto del narrare ci definisce come esseri umani e crea un legame con gli altri attraverso una continua connessione tra passato presente e futuro l'uomo da sempre raccoglie e conserva le tracce di tale connessione Mostrare le storie che vivono dietro a queste tracce, rendere accessibile il patrimonio immateriale, esporre ciò che si può solo raccontare, è oggi una necessità imprescindibile. Con un uso intimo del linguaggio visivo, si può raccontare una cosa che non ha forma né colore, come la musica. Si può entrare nello spirito e nell'anima di un artista, avvicinare il suo percorso di vita al nostro percorso di comprensione della sua arte, si può raccontare un luogo e coglierne l'essenza nel tempo. Si può scoprire cosa si nasconde dietro l'opera di un poeta, i suoi capogiri, gli smarrimenti del cuore, le verità svelate. Si può arrivare tutti a perderci nell'infinito. Progettare un'esperienza significa anche dare la possibilità di esplorare intimamente le proprie emozioni. Essere in uno spazio fisico significa vivere una situazione in modo diretto e condiviso. In un luogo si stabiliscono relazioni, si creano illusioni e spaesamenti. La realtà si rispecchia nella finzione e quando gli spazi sono anonimi o temporanei, il multimediale diventa materia che plasma l'ambiente creando forme dal nulla. Lungo il percorso capita che il particolare si rispecchi nell'universale, la storia di uno diventa quella di molti. In un luogo, la dimensione digitale si fonde con la dimensione fisica. La materia e la forma degli oggetti non sono mai disgiunte dalla loro essenza immateriale. La narrazione si articola nello spazio in un flusso simile a un viaggio e ciò che si apprende lungo il percorso diviene indimenticabile proprio perché le emozioni scavano un solco più profondo nella memoria. Il racconto stimola la sfera emotiva. Le metafore visive spettacolarizzano i contenuti, ma l'emozione rimane solo se al piacere del cuore si lega l'appagamento del pensiero. Creare nuove visioni significa dare alle emozioni una direzione. Significa condividere con la committenza e con il pubblico i propri sogni, lavorando incessantemente fino a che il racconto diviene l'opera. Ok, that's it. So thank you, thank you Franco, thank you so much. Everything was really interesting and exciting and I think it's it's a way in be inside a really engaged narrative space as your work is usually created for our visitors. So thank you, thank you guys to have been with us in Mantra Architettura and hope to see you as soon as possible. Thank you so thank much, you. Franco Rolle, Narrative Spaces. Thank you very much.